Ace cards are the cards that duelists carry with them throughout each of their decks, regardless of how much it changes over the course of the series. In contrast, boss monsters are the ultimate power that their deck is able to get out. This can change over the course of the series if the characters are around a lot. Sometimes boss monsters and ace monsters are kind of the same thing. But as a generality, ace monster, blue eyes white dragon. Boss monster, blue eyes ultimate dragon. You see, today I want to look at all of the ace monsters for the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX characters. We did it for the original series, we might as well carry on. So, let's start first with Jaden Yuki. Right out the gate, we have one of the most complicated characters to pin down an ace monster for. Why? Well, initially, Jaden's first ace in the anime started out as Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. This was a warrior fusion monster that had the ability that when it destroyed a monster by battle, you could inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's attack. Pretty cool card. Throughout the early parts of the series, this was his go-to fusion card. It would win him a lot of duels, and it always seemed to be the card he was most excited to get out onto the field. In fact, Jaden himself even states that this card is his favorite card. My favorite card! Elemental Hero, Flame Wingman! And they even made a card to reference Jaden saying this with the card Favorite Hero. That's it, right? If your favorite card is most likely your ace card, the card you carry through all your decks, it would be Flame Wingman, right? Well, there's a problem. Jaden's deck would go through some changes as he started incorporating Neospatians into it later in the series. As a result, we would see less of Flame Wingman and a whole lot more of Elemental Hero Neos. Neos is a 2500 attack point warrior monster with no effect, but what it does do is the ability to contact Fuse with any other Neospatian monster in Jaden's deck to create any kind of fusion monster that the plot wants, basically. Now, Neos has a lot going for him in terms of ace monster appeal. He was designed by the main character. His attack points make him in line with the now established trend of main characters in Yu-Gi-Oh. They have to have a monster with 2,500 attack points as their ace, or just at least a monster in their deck have that kind of thing. And of course, the most damning evidence of all is that Jaden actually says this to Yugi in the final episode. Yugi-san, black magician, elemental hero. Neos. So, this confirms it, right? Well, there's a twist to this. During Jaden's second duel with Crowler, just a few episodes before the final one, he says that his elemental heroes are still his favorite, despite how much his deck has changed. So what makes something an ace? Is it their favorite card or the card that is a symbol of the deck? Neos was in more duels, but I mean, if it's your favorite card, it's your favorite card. And I wish we could end things there, but we're not done. As a child, Jaden's ace was actually Yu Bell, a former human transformed into a duel monster that watches over the Supreme King, whom Jaden is now a reincarnation of. In my opinion, Yubel leans more in the spirit partner kind of thing, like Yami Yugi it eventually becomes his partner after he uses with it. However, the fact that she's also a card, it's hard to say. And if it, it was his ace as a kid, but eh. side note, by the way, Yubel, her ace monster is Yubel. Now that might seem a little bit egotistical and it actually is because there's another dual monster spirit that is a physical manifestation of a card, and that is Kyberman. His ace monster is not Kyberman. It's Blue Eyes White Dragon. So this proves you can have a card of yourself in your deck, and it doesn't have to be your ace card. I'm sorry, I lost track a little bit there. We're talking about Jaden's ace cards. We're just a new bell. Keep in mind, Jaden ran into Yugi in the first episode, and Yugi gave him his winged Karibo. Winged Karibo had the probably the greatest spiritual connection to Jaden out of all of his cards. This was the card that like would always manifest itself and help him in dire situations. And it was always the card he seemed to turn to the most. Be like, what should I do, Karibo? Is that his ace monster as well but i mean like it didn't win him that many duels apart from when he upgraded it into win Karibo level 10 but mm, i don't know and we're still not done because Jaden went through a bit of an evil spell where he became the the supreme king and the supreme king's ace card was super polymerization a card that let you fuse on both sides of the fields and it couldn't be responded to so that's 
pretty cool. And Jaden did inherit this afterwards. I don't know if that's really his ace card either. But then that brings up the point. Wait a minute. Maybe Jaden's ace card was right in front of us this entire time. Hidden in plain sight. What card has been mashing all of these monsters together to make his iconic fusion monsters? Polymerization. Maybe polymerization is Jaden's ace card. The point I'm trying to make is it's really hard to pin down Jaden's ace. Obviously, Neos and Flame Wingman are the, the main two, but there's a case to be made for a lot of other cards. So since I can't decide, I'm going to leave this one to all of you. I've put a poll on my community section right now where you can vote on either Neos, Flame Wingman, Polymerization, Wing Karibo, or u -Bell. I'll leave a link in the comments for you to find it as well, but I'm excited to see what you think is Jaden's ace monster. Alexis Rhodes. Her ace monster is Ethwell Cyber, a level four earth warrior monster with the effect that if it attacks directly, it boosts its own attack. I mean, Cyberblader was a contender for Ace, however, I think Cyberblader is more in the boss monster category, along with her like ritual cards that she played. They're all like boss monster kind of things. The reason I think S12 Cyber is her Ace card is she uses this monster throughout the entire series. We see it in her final duels. And her alternate universe counterpart, Alexis from Yu Gi Oh! Arc 5 use this card as well. So I mean like if your monster crosses dimensions where your characters tend to play different things then that's a pretty good reason for it to be your ace. And not only that, the time that she got kidnapped by Panic, she dropped one of her cards and this was the card that Jaden found and he knew straight away that it was Alexis Rhodes. Oh, this is Alexis's card. You can think about that for a minute if you want. If you got kidnapped and a card were to fall out of your deck, how would your friends know it was you that's been kidnapped? What would the card be on the floor? Be like, I know who that is. That's James. That's James's card right there. Anyway, Alexis has a brother, Atticus Rhodes. And his ace monster is Red Eyes Black Dragon, a level seven dark dragon type monster with no effects. Atticus actually plays a Red Eyes deck to support his red eyes monster he has all of the like support cards spells and traps that do the things with the red eyes black dragon and he has an upgraded form of it and an upgraded form of that it's really awesome however a case could be made for a spell card in this deck swing of memories you see this card represents his family to him it's called swing of memories sort of a family heirloom so i mean that card has a lot of sentimental value to him so it could a case that this was his ace card as well. And the fact that it can summon Red Eyes Black Dragon from the graveyard, since the effect is you can special summon a normal monster from the graveyard, but it's destroyed during the end phase, it works. Now, Cyrus Truesdale, I think, is a hard one because you never really put any emphasis on any of these like main deck monsters. I'm just gonna have to give it to the de facto boss monster of his deck for a while. It was his ace and his boss, and then he got upgraded later on into a different monster. It's the level eight machine monster. It requires three monsters to be summoned. It's Super Vehicle Roid Jumbo Drill. Keep in mind, this monster's ability was to inflict piercing battle damage. And if that sounds familiar, it's basically Cyber End Dragon. It's just, you know, nowhere near as good. Later down the line, I would actually say that once Cyrus became comfortable with using the Power Bond, because ye old days, uh, he played Power Bond as a kid, messed up uber bad his brother scolded him and says you're just absolute trash playing this card then and he i think he paid off the other guy to like just don't tell anyone you saw my brother use power bond like this and it's kind of the iconic card between zane and cyrus so i think power bond would be classed as his ace monster throughout the rest of the series i mean like at the end of the series as well he absorbs zane's uh, cyber dragon deck and cyber dark deck which i'm still salty about why would you combine Cyber Dragons, Cyber Dark Dragons, and the Roid deck all together. I know it works in the context of the anime, and I know Zane said he's, oh, you've surpassed me now with this. So, sure, whatever. I don't uh, know. I don't get to this. Song. Basically, Power Bond was his ace card. And if we're doing Zane Truesdale as well, Zane Truesdale's ace card is also Power Bond. If you don't know, Power Bond is a fusion card exclusive to machine monsters, and the monster it summoned gets double attack, but you take damage equal to its original attack at the end of the turn. So it's a risk reward kind of thing, but the reward is definitely worth the risk. And you might be thinking, why isn't Cyber Dragon Zane's ace? Well, I mean, it probably is. As iconic as Cyber Dragon is to Zane, I think Power Bond is equally so. And I feel like there's a lot more emphasis on the Power Bond card. I mean, Cyber Dragon is great, don't get me wrong, it's my favorite monster. And the fact that Cyber Dragon fuses with like every single one of Zane's monsters, it's literally the core of his deck. Cyber Dragon is just great. It's a level five machine monster that if you have no monsters in your opponent controls one, 
I think there's some in it. Also, while we're in this category, Zayn used a cyber deck. Another character that used a cyber deck was Chancellor Shepard. His ace monster was Cyber Ogre 2. Chess Princeton, I would have thought would have been hard to pin down with how much his decks change over the course of the series. Like, he plays a lot of different stuff. What he has is a lot of different boss monsters. VWXYZ, Dragon Cannon, Arm Dragon level 10. He played like the Shafonian cards. I think he had Infernal Cinerator as a boss monster for a while. But they're boss monsters. We don't care about them for this video. His ace monster was the Ojama Trio. Specifically, Ojama Yellow. A level 2 beast monster with zero attack and a thousand defense. How do I know Ojama Yellow is his ace? Well, a majority of the cards in his deck revolve around the Ojama cards. It is his spirit partner as well. It's always talking to him as much as it annoys him. And of course, in Chaz's big duel in the final season, he plays against Asta Phoenix, dresses Ojama Yellow for the majority of this as well, and he manages to beat Asta with Ojama Yellow. And when he does this, he even states that that monster is his ace in that moment. Done and dusted. Chumley Huffington. He played like an Australian themed deck and his ace monster. He looks like a koala. This is the whole thing. He's meant to look like a koala. So his ace monster is Des Koala. A level 3 dark beast type monster that when it's flipped up it inflicts 400 damage to the opponent for every card in their hand. The only wrench with Des Koala would be the fact that he designed a card called Ayers Rocks Sunrise, and it's quite a sentimental card to him. Chumley has a dad, Mr. Huffington. I don't think he has a first name. Mr. Huffington owns a, uh, a sake company. So of course, you would play a sake-based deck, and you would play one bottle of sake as your ace card. Of course, in the dub, those aren't his ace cards. They swapped the sake and the sake company with um, hot sauce. It's uh, one bottle of hot sauce. Just a little bit more hot sauce. You can handle it. You are so very generous. My pleasure. And your cats from the look of it. It doesn't make any sense. Who would drink hot sauce like this? <laughs> Disgusting. Bastion Masawa. Now, he is someone I almost want to say doesn't have an ace monster because he plays so many different decks throughout the series. And like his whole thing with Bastion is million different decks he always builds a new deck to counter whatever people play but if i had to associate him with a card i'm just gonna say it's water dragon i mean it's a cool card it makes all fire and pyro monsters on the field gun to zero in the opening cutscene of Yu-Gi-Oh gx we also see a fire dragon and he never plays this card throughout the rest of the series so i'd love to know if this card what effect would it have had would he have been able to use water dragon and fire dragon on the same field i just wonder i wonder what he could have done with that tyranno hasselbury his ace card was, of course, the level 8 dinosaur type monster, Super Conductor Tyranno. Its effect wasn't great. You could tribute a monster, deal a thousand damage, and you couldn't attack with that monster. Not great. Its upgraded form in the real world, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. It's quite devastating. But why is it his ace? Well, he loves dinosaurs. He broke his leg or his arm or whatever when he was a kid, and he had a dinosaur bone put in to replace it as well. So now he has dino DNA. So they used the dinosaur bone I found to save my leg. Ever since, I've had what they call Dino DNA. So it just makes sense he would have a dinosaur monster as his ace monster. And the same thing can be said for Jim Crocodile Cook. A similar case, he is half geologist, half duelist. He loves fossils. Loves them. So what would you play? A fossil deck. What would your ace card be? Fossil Fusion. A card that lets you use both graveyards to fuse with. You can use the bones of your opponents and your monsters to merge them together and make something cool. I think that's really awesome. I like that. Aster Phoenix is an interesting case because he doesn't really put that much emphasis on any of his main deck monsters. He has a lot of boss monsters, several of them, but I think his ace monster is of course Destiny Hero Plasma. This card is the last card his murdered father made and I think that makes it de facto his ace card. And with its ability to just joink an opponent's monster and add half of its attack onto its own, it's a good card as well. It's definitely worth keeping on the field and the fact that it just like nullifies all of a card effects on the field is just really good. And if you want to get technical, this card was a shared ace monster. The other character to have Destiny Hero Plasma as an ace monster was the D, the guy that killed Aster Phoenix's dad and just took the card, so... There you go. And while we're on Aster as well, we also have Sartorius. Sartorius's ace monster is a tough one because, well, there's quite a few Arcana Force monsters that could compete with the position. I mean, a lot of them kind of fall into boss monster category, but I'm just going to give it to Arcana Force. XXI. Zawaldo. 
the world, basically. I know this isn't an in-law reason. The voice actor for Sartorius in the Japanese is the same voice actor that plays Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Dio has an ability, a, a stand in the show called The World. So I just think that's kind of fitting. So why would you not have this as the ace monster? <laughs> Sartorius's sister played a mirror death. I don't really know what her ace was. I'd have to go back and watch the episode. I know she had a monster called Dark Creator. Probably a boss monster. So I'll let you guys tell me. What, what was her ace? She had some mirror cards. Were there any of those that seemed special? Or like she kept throughout the entire all? Uh, let me know. Now, Jesse Anderson, obviously his most iconic card is Rainbow Dragon. But I'm that's not his ace monster. That's just like his super uber boss monster. One of a kind card. I want to say his ace is Sapphire Pegasus. You don't realize how much work this card does. It's such a good card in a Crystal Beast deck. It's literally the core of the deck. It does so much. It's just strong. But it's not his ace. It's probably Crystal Beast Ruby Carbuncle, which is also his spirit partner. And it has the ability that when it's special summoned from the Crystal Beast zone, I'm pretty sure that was its effect, it special summons all the Crystal Beasts to the field. So, eh, I feel more Sapphire Pegasus, but I'd probably Ruby Carbuncle, right? Yubel Possessed, Jesse, probably Advanced Dark as his ace card. And obviously the boss monster is Rainbow Dark Dragon. Now, Axel Brody's ace is probably going to be Volcanic Doomfire. It's a, it's, a, it's a cool card. That's like an ace boss monster. He keeps it from the start all the way to the end. I would like to make a case for Blaze Accelerator if you didn't want that as an ace card. This just works so well with the deck and it's just like a core part of it. And obviously it upgrades into its boss card form, Tri-Blaze Accelerator. Axel's dad, who makes a very slight appearance in the final season, which isn't really his dad. It's like a possession from the darkness and stuff but it's a volcanic queen volcanic queen adrian gecko at first adrian plays cloudians and i'm just gonna say his boss and ace card was the cloudian eye of the typhoon card but then he sacks off that deck to play an exodia deck i think his new ace card in that becomes exodius the ultimate forbidden lord and that has to be his ace card do you know why because he basically kills his girlfriend to get this deck so i mean you can't get a deck and be like Oh, I don't know if I like this deck that much. You've come too far at that point. You're like, yes, this is my ace. I'm wholeheartedly invested in this deck now. So yeah, Exodius. Felonius Viper. This is a snake duelist who's kind of evil. I'm going to say his ace was either Venom Swamp or Venomenon, the King of Poisonous Snakes. Obviously, that's got an upgraded form, but I think Venomenon, ace monster, ace card. Velian Crowler's ace, easy and simple, Ancient Gear Golem. Jean-Louis Bonaparte's ace, Toy Emperor. You remember the Shadow Riders? Well, quick round here. Titan's ace was Pandemonium. Camula's ace, Illusion Gate. Tanya's ace, Amazonas Arena. Abydos Third's Spirit of the Pharaoh. Don Zalug, all of the Dark Scorpions. Amniel, mm, Helios the Magistus. But I want to say Sabtiel the Philosopher's Stone as well, but... Helios. And how can we forget the leader, Kagamaru? His ace, all three of the sacred beasts. That's pretty cool. Now for the final season, two of the characters, we have Yusuke Fujiwara. His ace was probably gonna be honest. He's got his clear world and his clear vice dragon and all that. They're like boss monsters. And I do like clear world a lot. I'd love for them to make clear support. I talk about this all the time. I think his ace monster was obviously honest. It's the card that he had to seal away when he became evil. Oh, it's a really good card, by the way. It's a level four light fairy monster that when your light monster is attached, you can discard it to boost your monster attack by the attack of the opponent's monster. It's a really good quick effect. Like early hand trap monster as well. It's very strong. Funny with the big bad final villain of the entire series, the darkness. Night Shroud. I'd say his ace cards was Zero and Infinity. Did they ever make these in real life? I'm actually not too sure. They like shuffle around and then however many cards are in between them, that's how they got their effects. And he did have a boss monster, but that's for a different video. And I think with that, that's everyone done. If there's any cards I didn't mention today, I'm saving them for the boss monster video. Don't worry. However, if you think I genuinely did miss an ace monster or I got some of them wrong, let me know in the comment section below. Other than that, watch the Duel Monsters version of this video right here and have a good day. Bye, everyone. Catch you later.